Hello, it's Bruce Williams, and today I want to present part 10 of my series on the selected gross pathology of avian species, as I do at the beginning of all of my lectures. I want to thank those friends and colleagues who have provided me their images either directly or through online collections, which allow me to put these lectures together. Today it's going to be pretty brief. We're going to talk about the urinary system. One of the reasons that's going to be brief is that birds do not possess a lot of the urinary system we see in other domestic species. They have kidneys, they have ureters, then it sort of stops and they excrete uric acid into the cloaca. In some species, it goes back into the colon where it joins the nitrog other nitrogenous wastes um, by reverse peristalsis but there's no urinary bladder for collection, not even a sphincter on the cloaca. So when it comes out, it comes out. A big reason why I've never been a huge fan of pet birds. As we said before, and as we referred to a number of times, birds are set apart from mammals by the fact that they excrete nitrogenous wastes as insoluble uric acid. A lot of this is bound to proteins, about 65 or 70 percent is bound to proteins. Okay, the animal needs to flush this out with water so they do have insensible losses through the kidney. But they don't excrete urea as mammals do. Birds also have two different types of nephrons in their kidneys. They have a reptilian type which is located in the more superficial cortex and a mammalian type which is located in the more deeper regions of the cortex. And the big difference is that uh, reptilian uh, nephrons do not possess the loop of Henry, they, the loop of Henley. They don't have the concentrating mechanisms because essentially the nitrogenous waste produced by reptiles appears to be about the same osmolality of that in plasma, whereas mammals tend to concentrate. So birds have an ability to concentrate some of their nitrogenous waste per se, but nothing like what we see in mammals. Therefore, the medulla is much smaller in the bird than the cortex at about 5 to 15 percent of the total mass of the kidney. Well, let's look at a couple of these diseases of the kidney. We should rip through this system pretty quickly. We've talked about most of these conditions in other lectures as well. Can you count from one to two? Here's one kidney and the other one's missing. So this is renal aplasia. No reason that birds can't have some of the same congenital abnormalities that, uh, that the rest of domestic animal species can. Probably never affected this bird during its entire life, but uh, just came up a little short in the kidney field. Here is an absolutely fantastic picture from Cornell University of viral infection of the kidney. And there are a couple of viruses that will affect the kidney. One we mentioned when we talked about respiratory system, and that is infectious bronchitis virus. It's a coronavirus, but some of the strains have a nephrogenic attraction to the kidney. They will go down there. They will cause necrosis of tubular epithelium, and you'll get a lesion that looks very much like this. Now, this can get a little confusing because what we're seeing is dilated tubules which are filled with uric acid. There's probably granulomous inflammation here and gouty tophi, if we looked at it, underneath the microscope. Those spiculated uh, aggregates of uric acid, which actually are just a sort of negative relief because it tends to wash out during alcohol fixation of tissues. But we're not looking at the actual necrosis caused by the virus itself. If we saw an acute case, we might see some, uh, some kidneys that were very swollen. Maybe we see a little bit of, of white dots on them. But when it gets to this point, okay, you're seeing the result. You are seeing that these urates um, are accumulating. The 
Renal tubular epithelium is necrotic. It is unable to process them properly, and they are aggregating within the devitalized tissues and the surrounding uh, parenchyma. And you're seeing, really, a bad case of renal gout. So, don't get confused. Viral damage to the kidney or any damage to the kidney will give you an identical appearance to gouty tophi. We're going to look at that in, in a minute and see if we can figure out is there any difference between the two. This is a sick bird kidney. A very sick bird kidney. Hey, let's get back to, uh, to the two viruses. I said that there were two. One is infectious bronchitis. The other one um, is a astrovirus known as avian nephritis virus. That's a pretty good name. Generally affects young poultry. Once again, damages the renal tubules, results in uh, inter significant interstitial inflammation, formation of lymphoid follicles, and if you have significant damage, you're going to have a kidney that looks like this with urates outlining all the damaged nephrons. Okay, let's look at a case of renal gout. Maybe this animal is unable to expel it. Maybe it's getting way too much high protein. Maybe there's another disease in here. Oftentimes you might see uh, uh, amyloid in, in certain species, especially in waterfowl. Can you tell the difference? I find it very difficult. There does seem, and, and I don't know if this is widespread in the bird, but there do seem to be these sort of whitish flakes um, on this surface. It might have been throughout the animal, which might lead us toward the fact that this is a form of, of visceral gout, and we're looking at a case of severe dehydration. But they can be very difficult to tell apart grossly and histologically. If you saw something like this, which we've looked at before, with all of this uh, urate deposition as well as concomitant inflammation on the, in the pericardial sac along the surface of the liver or, or other parts of the viscera, then we could go more maybe toward a traditional visceral gout rather than renal damage. So, bottom line, when you see a lesion that looks like this, you need to keep both in your mind. Could it be due to some type of viral damage to renal epithelium, not allowing the bird to excrete the urates, or could it just be that the kidney is overloaded by urates in the face of dehydration, possible high protein levels in the diet working concomitantly? Here's a fantastic picture. If you said this is gout, I think that uh, I would really have to consider that one as well. This is from a goose, and the little white foci that you are seeing are probably a combination of, of plugged epithelium. This animal has renal coccidiosis caused by Imeria truncata. There's also one called Imeria gavii. Um, generally, uh, renal coccidiosis is not really all that common. There are a couple of species that see it. You can see it in waterfowl. You can see it in horses and guinea pigs with Clausiella, uh, mice, and bats. But it's particularly well documented in domestic geese with Imeria truncata. Usually these geese are crowded together. They have poor hygiene. Schizogony and gametogeny both occur in the renal epithelium, resulting in necrosis of renal tubular epithelium, and then you are going to have concomitant uh, uh, inability to excrete the uh, uh, the gout, uh, the gout, the urates, and you'll get a little bit of gout here, along with inflammatory changes. It's not going to cause the kidneys to shut down like the ones we've seen previous, but that's a tough call, these little white dots. Whenever you see them in the kidney of the bird, you have to consider renal damage or gout along with anything else. Knowing that this is a goose and other geese in the flock have had coccidia, we could probably jump to this particular conclusion. Tumors. Well, we've looked at this one before. This is lymphoma of the kidney in a chicken, and 
you got to just give a good differential diagnosis. Could this be retroviral induced avian leukosis? It sure could. Could this be Merrick's disease? Eh, it sure could. Uh, could this be reticuloendotheliosis? It sure could. So I'm not good enough anymore. I used to be better. Now, as I've learned more, I know that I know less about these conditions. And I'm just going to give you those three and say, pick whichever one you want. And if you got the money, go ahead and run the tests. And we're going to finish up with a very, very common neoplasm in parakeets or budgerigers, and that is renal carcinoma. Big renal carcinoma in this budgie. If this was just about any other species of bird, I would probably go with ovarian carcinoma or oviductal carcinoma or something like that due to the positioning, but it's a budgie, so I'm just going to write down renal carcinoma. Well, no diseases of the urinary bladder? Not in birds. Okay, so we're pretty well done. We covered the, the vent. I don't know a lot of diseases of the cloaca. We talked about cloacal papillomas um, in, uh, uh, in the GI section when we talked about diseases of the vent. So if you want to go back and review that, that would be fantastic. Um, these lectures tend to drag on and on, so I thought I'll just refer you back for cloacal diseases to uh, uh, part two of the gastrointestinal system. And I'm out before 12 minutes. Have a great day.